Tonight is October the 13th, 2018. I'm going to uh, give you one more update, one more, hopefully, a very nice, complete, and informative video on this 833 amplifier I've built. I only use it on 20 meters. I know at the the uh, knob there uh, on the band switch is set to 40, but I'll explain that to you later. This is what it looks like in with everything closed. Uh, generally, I open this up, of course, so we can get into the inside. And oftentimes, I just take it off because it, uh, it comes off right here, and then I can remove that. Um, plate current, grid current, plate tuning, plate loading, and band switch. Uh, I used to, I only operated on 20, and we can put that on 20, but I'll show you why I don't use it on, 20, on, on this band switch on 20 anymore, because I took out the 10 meter loading coil, and it just really did a lot, a whole lot to stabilize it. There's the 833 in there, and there's the 866 rectifiers down there. I'll turn it on for just for a second. We're not going to put high voltage on it yet, because I'm actually going to pull the uh, amplifier out and show you the uh, underneath it and everything. If we power it up, there's what that looks like. It's got a fan right up there. If you can kind of see it, it's blowing straight down onto the top of the 833. There on the left is the plate cap, but on the right is the grid cap. And then, of course, the filament's down at the bottom. And the filament bypassed the ground and bypassed lead to lead. All of those kinds of things seem to be really important. This copper pipe sticking up here is the grid feed. Uh, I put that on there because I just didn't want a piece of RG58 standing up there. Of course, I've got this on here. All this is for safety. Got safety around my 866s. They're actually very beautiful when they're lit, when there's power on them because they have that purple glow to them, that beautiful mercury vapor purple glow. Oh yeah, that blue that you see in there, that's the uh, bias voltage right there. It's very stable. It's 100 volts. It's actually a minus 100 volts, of course, on the grid. Here's our uh, plate voltage. It sets it exactly 4,000 when it's powered up. You got a fuse right here, of course, large fuse. This is bypass. If I put it down, then the, it just bypasses the amplifier like it's not even there, so the uh, transceiver goes straight through. And this is the grid bias adjustment. It's a variac, it's a little small variac. I had a uh, <clears throat> different kind of uh, adjustment for the grid bias voltage using SCRs, but it was just too unstable. It was very, very touchy when you would try to adjust a pot and one minute it'd be 100 volts, the next minute it'd be 110, or it might be 85 or whatever. So anyway, I had to go to something nice and reliable like a Variac. That is pretty much the front of it. The front plate current does measure from zero to one amp. Normally runs about 450 amp, uh, excuse me, 450 milliamps. And grid current is usually about 50 milliamps. Uh, this is a uh, vacuum capacitor, and uh, so is this. And this is a BMW 852. You'll see it in uh, just a minute. But I wanted to show you the front without putting any high voltage on and having to wait until the capacitor is discharged and all that stuff. And so now I'm going to pull the uh, amplifier chassis out and we'll take it to the back to the workshop and uh, point out some of the things that I've done in it. I hope you enjoy. Okay, well here it is out of the cabinet. That only took about five minutes. If you're an amplifier builder, or most any kind of builder, and you you build things like this, you, you learn pretty quick. A little bit dark in there for the power supply. Let me see if this light, I don't think flashlights do a really good job, but they're pretty better than nothing. There's the 866s and the filament transformers for it. That's the bank of uh, capacitors. There's 12 of them in there rated at 470 microfarads at 450 volts each. That transformer right there is the uh, 10 volt, 10 amp transformer for the filament. Here's some of the controls, and there's the uh, Variac uh, power transformer and choke and an output capacitor. You might 
I'm going to point out what this right, this resistor right here is for. That's a 0.33 ohm. doesn't have to be 0.33, just a fraction of them, like a 0 0.33, 0 0.47, whatever. You can see it's in line with the high voltage lead. This lead right here is the 4,000 volts that goes to the amplifier. So if anything shorts out here on this, on this side, that resistor explodes. And that's really good because I had a, a short not too long ago. And I'll show you that in a minute. There's a solid state relay down there that I'm shining the light on. This is right down there. This is the bias transformer, and then there's a choke right there. It's a pie filter for the uh, bias supply. It's actually fairly simple. Oh, there's that readout right there. It's a little uh, digital readout for the uh, bias voltage. And as I vary this right here, uh, you'll see the voltage varying there. So if you want to set it back at some value, so that's the power supply. Speaking of explosions, uh, these uh, types of uh, high voltage connectors I have found to be extremely good, but then I've had them for a very long time too. And apparently this one got cracked and it arced. And when it arced, it blew it to pieces as you can see. That's what 4,000 volts would do. It just does some really strange stuff. And of course that 0.33 ohm resistor was Absolutely vaporized. Well, back to the beautiful amplifier here. Um, these BMW tank coils come with an additional outboard uh, 10 meter tank that uh, coil that fits right here. And uh, I had it on there. But I took it off and just used the 40 meter portion of this inductor. And it works out great. It's so much more stable. I had instability problems in it that I just couldn't quite put my finger on. Uh, of course, high voltage goes in right here. It actually comes up right here. Uh, bypass capacitor. This is out of an old World War II ART-13. Provides plate voltage straight up to the uh, plate of the 833. It's even hard to touch it sometimes because I, I know how deadly these things would be if they're on. You know, even when you know it's not plugged in and it's completely as safe as a rock, uh, it's still, I don't know, your brain is saying, no, don't, don't touch that, don't touch that. But anyway, I can touch it. DC here, blocking capacitor, no DC here, just RF. Goes into the tank circuit. This one is the tuning off the ground. Goes through the tank, comes out of here. This is uh, loading off the ground. This is these, uh, you add this uh, uh, RFC in right here, this radio frequency choke in here, just in case on the hopefully rare, rare occasion that these one of these capacitors shorts, you would end up with DC out here on your antenna and this would take it to ground and blow the fuse. This is RF output, just goes uh, to the uh, TR relay underneath. Yeah, this is uh, RF output ground a 3 amp fuse in series with the um, filament transformer. Uh, this is where it receives its bias and some voltages. 10 volt, 10 amp, the, the 4000 volts and the RF input. But uh, I, I recently swapped this out. I've read and I think that was part of my problem too. You could get some very strange resonance issues out of these large loading capacitors unless it's really designed uh, very very well and of course I'm an amateur radio operator I'm not a pro at this and have to do the best I can but I think those vacuum capacitors are just beautiful so let's uh, turn it over and look at it underneath okay underneath well here we have RF input right here because it goes to the TR relay this relay in a relaxed condition like right now uh, non-energized it just goes straight through so if you put an ohm meter here and an ohm meter here in and out you'll find a direct connection of course when the when the relay is energized and this is pulled in then the input is directed over to here this is a 50 ohm non-inductive resistor and it loads the uh, input so i have essentially a 50 ohm 50 plus j0 a little bit of inductance but uh, not too bad. And then here's the RF going all the way down here to a uh, blocking capacitor. Where we also feed it right here, the, uh, the bias voltage. And then it goes uh, straight into the 
grid of the tube actually right here is going to the grid of the tube this is coming uh, with now this is the bias voltage and yeah here's the grid of the tube off right here I'm sorry going right up here and, uh, and, and through that copper pipe that's going up here's a capacitor just trying to keep the uh, both of the uh, filament terminal at the same RF potential here is a uh, uh, bypass capacitors a large one and a small one you, you put small ones on there because they have less inductance than large ones you see this even in audio a lot of times where they'll bypass large capacitors with small capacitors that's so that uh, again you, you don't uh, have extra in, you, you have more inductance in these large ones than the small ones here's the high voltage coming in this comes in straight to a standoff goes through a Z50 that's pretty standard uh, another bypass all these are bypass capacitors Buy lots of be very generous with your bypass capacitors here's a couple right here on the filament leads to ground here's on all of the voltages coming in you want to you want to stop all of the RF from you don't want any RF leaking out so to speak uh, through your uh, connecting wires and control voltages so that's underneath it. There's just not a whole lot to it, is there? Now this resonant circuit over here is not being used right now. You can see I've got this loose. I don't need it. I just haven't removed it yet. This was the this was the resonant and neutralizing circuit. I thought I had it really well neutralized at one time, but it, it just never did fit my satisfaction. So I uh, unsoldered this right here, which completely eliminates this. This is just this is doing nothing. So I'm just going to leave it in there for right now, just in case I get a uh, hankering to uh, do something to it. Look at there. I've got a. Oh no, that's okay. That's threaded. I I thought I left a nut off of it. That's pretty much it. There's just not a whole lot to it. There is one other little thing I want to show you on the top, though. As I mentioned, you want to be generous with your bypass capacitors. Here's a filament lead, and here's a microcapacitor off the ground. Same thing over here. The other filament lead with a microcapacitor off the ground. This is the neutralizing circuit that I showed you underneath that's, that's disconnected and there's a neutralizing capacitor right there. Let's see if we can get a better look at that right here. But uh, this is not being used at this time. Uh, here's the metering circuits. Oh, you want to put some bypass capacitors across them so that you don't generate any RF on it. I don't get any kind of RF feelings or burns out of it. I think I've learned over the years. Uh, you use plenty of bypass and what have you. I use copper strap right here. This is uh, strength tubing. Doesn't have to be there. I just thought it looked a little better with the strapping on it. This is just simply a, a mechanical mounting point. And there it is. When you switch the uh, front, you'll see this uh, right there move. That's what switches bands. And on the 40 meter portion, I believe it's using it from uh, uh, from the front down to maybe this connection right here. It's using about half of the coil, and uh, works works really well. So there you go. Now I'm much more pleased with it with this uh, this vacuum capacitor in there. It, I think it uh, solved some of the unsolvable parasitic type issues instabilities that it had I get great reports off of it now I'm very very pleased with it so let's put it back in and uh, see what it looks like lit up okay she's all back together now and warmed up here's a little microphone that I use I've been getting some uh, very good comments off of it. it's a little icon microphone it's called a uh, SM6, IC-SM6 and uh, it's into a dummy load there she be and you see the uh, 833 glowing yeah we're testing 1, 2, 3, 4, this is WA4QGA in El Paso testing
got that hum to it, doesn't it? I like that somehow. I'm not sure why. It just lets you know that, I don't know, it just sounds like high voltage. I guess you can hear that over the, over the video. And if we uh, put it into CW and turn it on and uh, press, the, press the key here, excuse me, I'm sliding things around there. You'll probably see the plate turn a lot. Let's see, you can see both of them. See the uh, rectifiers get really blue. It's not, the, the camera just gets overloaded by the thing. It's actually quite a healthy color. If you look up here at the watt meter, that's on a 2500 uh, watt element, so it'd be a little bit over 850. That's all it'll do. Well, that's actually not true. If I raise the voltage again, it'll do even more, but right now, I got something sliding around back here, make a terrible noise. Sitting right there, it's sitting, it's a, just a hair over 4000. Under full load, it drops to about 3,400. That's at about 400 and uh, oh, almost 440 milliamps, and about uh, 44 milliamps on the grid. So there you go. I just had to show this thing one more time. I'm having so much fun with it. I'm driving it with a little ICOM IC736. Might be a little dark there. But, um, I get really good reports from it, and they tell me it's dead quiet. And uh, being an audio fellow, uh, you know, I really appreciate that. There's its 100 volts bias right there, if you could see the 100 volts through the through the screen so there you go hope you enjoy these things and I don't know maybe this will be the last uh, 833 RF amp I build well it'll certainly be the last one I build maybe it'll be the last posting I make of this guy but I just had to do one more I enjoy this thing so much here's the other amplifier this is the 31000 Z if you like big amplifiers this one will do darn near twice as much power actually I'm not going to fire it all up, but uh, yeah, this one's a lot more powerful. But anything over five or six hundred watts, I think it mostly we're just having fun. So there you go. I do have the little uh, Collins 30L1 right here. Really nice little amplifier. I can't power it up because uh, it's not plugged in right now. The, uh, the 833 amp is taking up the plug, but this one will put out, uh, actually I'll route it 750 watts of average power. It's actually a really powerful little amp. And the old R39, it sounds like you're sitting in the room with me when I'm listening to you on this. And the, uh, if you like the S-Line equipment, there's the 75S3 receiver and the 32S1 uh, Cider. I use this one a lot too, but I've been having so much fun with this guy, I can't just seem to get away from it. Thanks for watching.